Warm greetings to everyone coming back to this channel and to all the new members who are following us. Today's study bears the title Jubilee Year or is also known as Acceptable Year. There is an interesting verse in Isaiah chapter 46. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. And why is it so? Because it says he is declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. According to his word, he revealed the end from the beginning. And if he declared it, to whom he revealed the truth? To his servants the prophets, but not for their sake only, but for his people. Whenever his people wandered from him, he would bring them back to the track when they repent. And it will go all over again with the next subsequent generation. Then he says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. Now, according to the same principle, devil must work. He declared himself to be God, claimed the worship, Therefore, Heavenly Father made him follow the same pattern, that Satan does nothing but revealeth his secrets unto his servants. For this reason, devil is revealing his secrets through movies, cartoons, and etc. So, as the God of this world, he also reveals his plans. Year of Forgiveness, also acceptable year or jubilee year, when Adam and Eve lost the land. We can say that the stopwatch was activated and the plan, in this case of the fall, which father had before the fall with his son. So that plan was realized. The end of the plan is the return to the land. When we look in the Bible, we know that number seven is God's number. For instance, seven churches, seven trumpets, seven plagues, seven seals, seven stars, seven feasts, and etc. Everything described through the sevens. God said for the seven thousand years, that is it, the fullness of time. And within that time, everything will be over. It is fullness, not less, not more. God calculated that time is enough, and the land will be returned to them not at the second coming, but at the third coming of Jesus to the earth. The principle 6 plus 1 equals 7. It goes from the weekly cycle through the seventh year to the seventh millennium. 6 plus 1 is 7, and the seventh is always the rest. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So, on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. We know that God could create slower or faster, but he said seven is completely enough. But the seven is composed of six plus one, and it is important to notice that one at the end is always a rest. So, six plus one is seven, not less, not more. Number seven, the fullness of God. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. The principle 6 plus 1 is 7, which relates to the days also known as weekly cycle. And we see this is biblical. God wanted us to always keep the seventh day Sabbath. In fact, the Sabbath is the memorial of the creation of that cycle, which is 6 plus 1, is 7. And now we are moving on to the annual 6 plus 1 equals 7 cycle. It relates to the years. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. And what else this means? Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years shalt thou prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. 
But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord, and watch out the entire year is a rest. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. And let us pay attention to the words, Shalt neither sow nor prune. They are quite important. When we move to the book of Revelation and think of the end, for instance, in chapter 14, we see Jesus who has a sharp sickle and reaps the harvest. However, there is another picture of gathering the grapes for the wine press. And what does this verse here speak about? About sowing the field and pruning the vineyard. And what is this all about? The principle 6 plus 1 means 6 years to sow and reap, but not on the 7th. What else the Bible says? That which groweth of his own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy wine and rest, for it is a year of rest unto the land. First he says, Do not sow, neither prune, and then he adds, Do not reap, neither gather grapes. This is important, because in the last year on earth, within the last five months when the last seven plagues start, there will be no more preaching, neither saving of souls. How do we know this? When we read Matthew, we find that sowing is a symbol of speaking the word of God to people. Harvest, on the other hand, gathering of God's faithful in one group and the unfaithful into another group. Not sowing, neither pruning will be taking place in the last seven plagues. For pruning and sowing represent the spiritual development that is character building. And will anyone develop their character in the, se in the seven plagues? Bible tells us, who is filthy, let him be filthy still, and who is holy, let him be holy still. There are many parallels between all the New Testament. It is important to learn them, so to recognize them in the book of Revelation. There will come a time when the last seventh year will come, the last seventh year, or the 49th is the year 5999. And the last jubilee, or a 50th year, will be the year 6000. What will take place in that year 5999? God says there will be no more sowing, no more pruning, no reaping, no gathering. And who are the reapers? The Bible tells us the angels. So, to sum up, sowing is the symbol of speaking the gospel to people while the reaping is the symbol of gathering the people, one into heavenly barn and another into the wine press. Not to sow nor to prune the vineyard is the symbol of the cessation of the preaching of the gospel, and it is the picture of the end of the world, which is described by the picture of the harvest in Revelation 40. And the Sabbath of the land shall be made for you, for thee, and for thy servant, and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, and for the stranger that sojourneth with thee, and for thy cattle, and for the bees that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. And in Revelation 14 we find, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one set like unto the Son of Man having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Trust in thy sickle, and reap. So on this year we do not reap, it is the job of the Lord and the angels. And then he says, For the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. It is ripe. It is the end of the grace for the world. If we move now to the final seventh year on earth, the one preceding the 50th jubilee year, we will understand what is going to take place then. 
For this sake, these years have been given us, and we will see more examples of 6 plus 1 is 7, because Jesus cannot come in the 5th or 4th year or the 52nd year. That is not biblical. And God was always returning his people through the history to the right track of time to fit in the correct 7th cycle year because he is God who is declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done. And he that sat on the cloud trust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. The wheat is going into the barn. Another picture tells us. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, and he also having a sharp sickle. Trust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel trust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth. And here we see the two groups again. And cast it into where? It says the great winepress of what? The wrath of God. What is the winepress of the wrath of God? It is the last seven plagues. The wine press full of grapes, it will be squeezed and the blood will be all over the earth. This is the picture of the last seven plagues. The way wine press squeezed the grapes, so will the seven plagues squeeze the inhabitants of this earth, unfortunately. However, this has got nothing to do with the wheat. It goes into the heavenly barn. And the wine press, which is the symbol of the unfaithful people, was trodden without a city, and blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Jubilee or acceptable year. Now we have seen that six plus one is seven, related to the weekly cycle, then annual cycle six plus one as well. Let's explain the Jubilee year now and how it relates to the end. Jubilee year, in Hebrew, Joel, or ram's horn, that was the trumpet. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you forty and nine years. Then we receive the answer now. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound, when? It says, On the tenth day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. So the entire year is announced as a jubilee, and it starts on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement, or Yom Kippur, the sixth Jewish feast. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, or the year hundred, or the year thousand, or the year six thousand. These are all jubilees. And proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. And ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. The possession that Adam and Eve lost will be returned to the mankind. When they failed, devil took the control and power over it and he will be holding it for six thousand years, and the Bible says he will be bonded for thousand years. It is mentioned in Revelation chapter 20, six times. So if he is bonded for thousand years, how many years he held the earth into his possession? Six thousand years. Plus thousand years totals seven thousand years. This is also connected with the annual years we read about. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy wine undressed. Again it says, not to sow, not to reap, nor gather. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you, ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee ye shall return every man 
unto his possession. When is the possession returned? Very important to understand, it takes place on a jubilee year. And now we see the cycles on the next chart. Each seventh year is bolded. So the 7th, 14th, 21st, 28th, 35th, 42nd and 49th, they are all the seventh year in each cycle. These are all Sabbath years. Then we have the 50th right at the end and its entire year and it is announced and it begins on 10th Tishri. That is the seventh month. And it starts on a day of atonement, 10th Tishri. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits doth he sell unto thee. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years, and ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until have fruits come in, ye shall eat of the old store. God is promising if we keep the cycle six plus one, he will have blessed it to yield fruits for three years. Could you imagine if we keep this today, and we are waiting for the coming of Christ, and somebody asks us, why are we doing that? Then we will be able to explain the meaning of pruning and sowing, etc. But not only that, but the exact time of the return of our Lord. Principle 6 plus 1 is 7, which refers to millennia, shows that after 6,000 years of sin, will 1,000 years of rest for the earth come. 6,000 years of sin, possession lost, and Satan became the owner of the land. That's when his time started, and when it is up, he will be bonded for 1,000 years. The principle 6 plus 1 is 7. We have through the Sabbath day, we have six days of creation, one day of rest, a week. It's a seven-day cycle. Then we have through a Sabbath year, six years of work, plus one year of rest, that is seven years. Then we have a Sabbath millennium, six millennia of sin, plus one millennium of rest, that is in total seven millennia. In 80th Jubilee year, and that is 80 times 50, is 4,000 years since the fall, Jesus fulfilled spring feasts. And in 120th Jubilee year, that is 120 times 50, is 6,000 years since the fall, Jesus will fulfill autumn feasts. And this study is speaking of the millennium of the Jubilee or acceptable year which is connected with the return of Christ. The principle 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7 through the seal and trumpets to the millennium. 6 plus 1 is 7 can also be broken down to 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7 and we are going to see that God uses this principle also. The first four seals are shown as an entirety through the four riders. Notice there is no seven riders but four. Then the fifth and the sixth seal as one whole. And finally the seventh seal is described separately. First six seals in chapter 6 and seventh seal in chapter 8. After chapter 7, so it is reflecting the principle of 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. The first four trumpets are described in 8th chapter of Revelation as one whole, then 5th and 6th trumpets are in the ninth chapter of Revelation as a second whole, so that the 7th trumpet would remain separately also according to the principle of 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. And why is this important? Principle 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7 through millennia describes first coming of Christ is after four millennia since the fall into sin, the second coming of Christ after two millennia from the first coming, and the third coming of Christ with the saved and the new Jerusalem after one millennium from the second coming. By the first coming Christ opened the kingdom of grace, with the second coming he is bringing judgment, and with the third coming he is returning our possession. 
But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. If we have a principle, 6 plus 1 is 7, in the week of creation, then we have the same principle, 6 plus 1 is 7 of millennia, 6,000 years of sin, 1,000 years of rest. For this reason, the jubilee years exist, that we be not ignorant of this one thing. The first coming of Christ and the announcement of the acceptable 4,000 year of grace in Isaiah. The acceptable or jubilee year was announced for three and a half years earlier, and I believe that before the second coming, the same will take place. Christ preached for three and a half years, disciples done the same. So Christ was announcing the jubilee three and a half years earlier. The text in Luke says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable or jubilee year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And what was fulfilled is that Jesus started his service announcing the coming jubilee for another three and a half years. Slaves of sin became free, sick were getting healed, acceptable year was preached. With his first coming, Jesus paid the price for salvation, the Lamb, and with his second coming, Jesus executes the judgment, the Lion, upon all who rejected him. There he completes the history of sin. Verses in Daniel 9, we can apply it for all the three comings, first, second, and third. To finish the transgression, Christ ended transgression in his flesh. Make an end of sins, Christ made an end of sin in his life. So this can be all applied to his second coming also. When he comes, he will finish the transgression of the world and make an end of sins. Anoint the most holy to reign whole eternity. Jesus was anointed in heaven when he ascended after the resurrection for a priest. He will be anointed again at the beginning of millennium for a king, and after a thousand years again for entire eternity, so it can be applied for each coming. It is important to recognize the parallels. And Jesus announced acceptable year jubilee, reading Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. He said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Jesus read the part of the text that talks about the jubilee year related to his first coming while he omitted the text that talks about the jubilee year related to the second coming. It is the same when Peter quoted prophet Joel in the book of Acts about the pouring of God's Spirit. He read only the first bit of the text which related to their time, but the end which relates to the end, pillars of smoke, fire and blood, he left out because it was not for their time. Same was in the case of Jesus. The day of vengeance of our God is for those who do not want to hear the gospel, because the grace is over for all ages. By the occasion of Christ's ascension and inauguration, a jubilee in heaven was celebrated. He had ascended on high, leading captivity captive, and he now claimed the gift of the Spirit, that he may pour it upon his disciples. It says a jubilee was kept, time of celebrations, and how many feasts were fulfilled by this time. He claimed the gift of the Spirit to pour it out on disciples, and that was on Pentecost. Pentecost is a fourth feast, so by then four, four feasts were fulfilled. All the four feasts happened within the same jubilee year. 
second coming of Christ after 6,000 years. We have again 4 plus 2 plus 1. Christ coming after 4 millennia, second after another 2 millennia, and third coming after 1 millennium. Siege of Jerusalem on a Sabbath year and liberation from Sennacherib. It is interesting how God used different occasions to return his people to a correct track of time. In this event, when the siege took place, it was on a Sabbath year just before the Jubilee year. So what happens on a Jubilee? A liberation or freedom. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat of the fruits thereof. The Lord says it is a sign. Sign is there to show us the pathway. If we have two Sabbath years one after the other, it means that the second one is the fiftieth year, that is a jubilee year, and by following this, they could return to the correct way of the time frame. Why were the Israelites taken into bondage to Babylon in the span of the time of 70 years? He says here they need to go slavery until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as they lay desolate, she kept the Sabbath to fulfill three score and ten years. They spent 70 years in bondage because they broke so many Sabbath years during the past. They worked instead of resting. God says, no problem. The time they did not keep Sabbath years, they will spend in bondage and the land will rest for that time. All the years it lost in the past. God does this out of his grace towards us to place us back to the correct track of time that he operates at. He wants to bring us at the beginning when he created all that we do not be in darkness and lost. Why exactly 70 years? For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the numbers of the days, three and ninety days. So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. So that is 390 plus 40, 430. There was a total of 430 years. Within the 430 years, we have 62 Sabbath years and 8 Jubilee years. So this is the exact time they had to spend in bondage. We see God keep true to his principles. As he says in Malachi, he does not change ever. Jubilee, God's day of judgment, is coming to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath. For 6,000 years, Satan was shaking the earth and for 6,000 years, his dungeon was receiving God's people and he would have kept the man forever if Jesus had not broken his chains and took his people up in heaven. This takes place in the 6,000 acceptable jubilee year, and after that millennium happens. This is pure and biblical and confirmed in many places within the Bible, such as Peter, Chronicles, and etc., and the principle 6 plus 1 is seen everywhere. If Jesus came in 48th year or 52nd, what would be all this of use? No. He had to come and be crucified and resurrected on a jubilee, the 50th year. Also, what would be the use of not sowing, reaping, pruning in the last 5,999th year, unless this is all a prefigure revealing the future events to us? Let's pay attention to the next verse. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things of Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So everything is being united, uh, both in heaven and things in earth, together in Christ. But when does this happen? He says, in the fullness of times. And what is the fullness of time? It is the seven. 
So when 7000 years is over, all will be united back as in the beginning on the new earth. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. First coming as lamb, second coming as a lion. It is the day of vengeance of our God. The jubilee year associated with the second coming begins on Yom Kippur, and that is the time the seventh, last or final play starts. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of seven years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, when, in the day of atonement, shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And what is the purpose of the trumpet? And what it announces, it announces a jubilee year. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto the inhabitants thereof. On the next chart we see time frame which God gave us beside jubilee years, to know the time of his coming. For the first coming he gave us seventy weeks, for the second coming, Daniel chapter 12. And all the time frame ends on the 10th Tishri. We already learned of this. The next chart shows us the events that will take place on that same day, 10th Tishri. Here we have a few more charts. You can pause the video to have a better look. Next picture shows us the heavenly clock, the time given to us. It is the 120 jubilees in which the sin will be finished or eradicated. We have three major or great Sabbaths, creation, redemption and glorification. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. On Friday the work of creating the earth was completed. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them by the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Creation was exclusively God's work and the married couple who did not participate in creation received everything as a gift and had the opportunity to rejoice with the Creator by keeping or celebrate the first Sabbath with Him. And this is called the Sabbath of creation. Then we have another Sabbath during the first coming. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus' death and burial are not contrary to the Scriptures, what is written in the Holy Scriptures, but in accordance with the Scriptures. After his burial on Wednesday the 14th came the third day, Sabbath the 17th, the whole three days during which Jesus lay in the tomb, ended on Saturday afternoon just before the sunset, and by no means on Sunday morning. We see it nicely on the next chart, 14 was Passover, 15 annual Sabbath, then 16 Friday, 17 weekly Sabbath, and on this picture we can see when he was resurrected prior to the end of the day 17th Nisan on Sabbath. So three days and three nights, and this is the second major or great Sabbath. You can learn more of this on our YouTube channel, now looking under the study called Resurrection on Sunday is a Lie. By his resurrection, Christ secured our victory over the sin, secured the resurrection, all in fact. And now it comes Sabbath concerning Christ's second coming, but we will say more of it in some future studies. We are going to say something about the dedication of Solomon's temple and bringing this study to its end. 
when the thousand years starts, Jesus will be serving in heavenly Solomon's temple. Right now, he's located in heavenly Moses' temple. So that is, these are the temples in heaven where God resides. Solomon's temple was a shadow for the thousand years, while Moses' temple was the shadow of the two thousand years between first and second coming of Jesus. The yard of the original temple that is in heaven is always on earth, while the holy and the most holy place are up in the heaven where our heavenly Father is. While Jesus is in the Moses temple, he is only a high priest. And who was Solomon? He was a king, priest and a judge. And this is a prefigure of what Jesus will be when he comes the second time. For a thousand years, Jesus needs to be a king, a priest and a judge. And we are to be a royal priesthood. Solomon's temple was dedicated in the seven Jewish man Tishri. The consecration of the temple and the altar lasted seven days, and that was the week preceding the Feast of Tabernacles. Thus the Jewish people had a feast of dedication of the altar connected with the Feast of Tabernacles, which was in total fourteen days. The original Solomon's temple consisted of the holy place and the holy of holies, that is the most holy place which make up one hole, and the porch where the altar for burnt offerings was located. Since there is no sin nor bloodshed in heaven, the courtyard and the altar for burnt offerings represent the earth where people offer themselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, and willingly dedicated their lives to Him. In the yard that represents the earth, we can see the twelve bulls and they are carrying great waters and these are the twelve disciples who are the foundation of the church. They brought to God the sea of people and we see that the waters in the scriptures represent the nations and the tanks and people. There are so many parallels and prefigures uh, located and all of these are in the yard that is our earth. Because there were so many sacrifices that could not be counted, so they that could not all fit on the altar, Solomon had to dedicate not only the altar, but also the central part of the porch. And how many saved there will be? As a sand of the sea or stars of the heaven, Bible says. This great multitude of sacrifices represent saved who were glorified down on earth in that very week of dedication. Jesus comes and gathers those who have made a sacrifice covenant with him. People are being changed, transformed down on earth, and then taken up to heaven, same as the sheaf was resurrected at Jesus' time in a new transformed body and then taken up to heaven. Also, the same time Solomon kept the feast seven days, that is tabernacles, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering of the Hamath unto the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had showed unto David and to Solomon and to Israel his people. And the feast is the Feast of Tabernacles, in this code. We must know feasts and revelation well in order to be able to understand the work of God for our end times. So they had the dedication of the older seven days, then a feast seven days. And which feast lasts for seven days in the seven month history? It is the only Feast of Tabernacles. We cannot make mistake about this because it is so plain. Seven days is the Feast of Tabernacles, on the first day is a holy convocation, a Sabbath, and on the eighth day also. Where will the saved be gathered before the trip to heaven? On the clouds, we know. Everyone will meet there, people will see their relatives, friends who slept, then the trip will take place for seven days. On the eighth day, gathering again, Revelation says on the sea of glass where we receive the crowns, palm branches, etc. And this is again a holy convocation. 
But on a 23rd, God sends his people to their homes, glad and merry in heart, for what God done for them. And this is very simple. God says that he declares the end right from the beginning. In the week of consecration before the seventh day journey, tabernacles to heaven, on the day of atonement, on the tenth day of Tishri, the ark was brought into the Holy of Holies in heaven, under the wings of the cherubim angels, as seen in the picture. On that very day in, the, in that week, the Ten Commandments appear in heaven for everyone to see down on earth. In that week, on the Day of Atonement, the 120th year of Jubilee was announced. On the Day of Atonement, the day and hour of Jesus' arrival is announced. Satan is born and the Great Jubilee begins. Jesus appears on the clouds and on the first day of the tabernacles gathers his people on the cloud, which represents the assembly or the congregation. Then he sets out on a seven-day journey during the Feast of Tabernacles to the heavenly Jerusalem. The eighth day of the feast is also a rest and an assembly, where the saved receive crowns and palm trees of victory on the sea of glass at the entrance to the holy city. And on the twenty-third day of the seventh month of Tishri, the saved will go to their homes and will be joyful because of the good that the Lord has done for his people. During the consecration of the temple, there were 120 priests with trumpets who blew their trumpets and stood on the east side of the altar. This all took place on the 10th of Tishri, on the Day of Atonement, and we read about it. Also the Levites, which were the singers of all of them of Asaph, of Heman and Jedutin, with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests sound in the trumpets. The question arises, what did the trumpets represent that were heard on the Day of Atonement, and why exactly one hundred and twenty trumpeters sounded? Each trumpeter, one jubilee year, that is fifty years, so one hundred and twenty trumpeters times 50 years, the length of one jubilee year, is exactly 6,000 years. Can it be 6,001 or 5,999? No, it cannot be. It is exactly 6,000 years. And why on the east side? Because Jesus is coming from east unto the west as the thunder light. This was a dedication of Solomon's temple. It starts with its function at the beginning of thousand years. 120 trumpeters mark the beginning of the temple service at the beginning of exactly year 6000. 49 years were to pass before the first trumpet sounded on the Day of Atonement to herald the 50th or first jubilee year. The second trumpet announced the 100th year, that is the second jubilee year. 120 trumpets on the Day of Atonement announce the 6,000th year, or the 120th Jubilee year. On the next chart, this is nicely presented. Tenth Tishri is important. On that day, sixth plague ends, seventh begins. Year 5,999 ends and the Jubilee or acceptable year 6,000 begins. That is the first day of the year 6,000. It is also 120 of Jubilee. On the journey of seven days during the Feast of Tabernacles and going to the heavenly Jerusalem, the ministry of Christ described by the Temple of Moses ends and the ministry of Jesus Christ as King, Priest and a Judge described by the Solomon's Temple begins. We would end this study here and may the Lord bless us all to understand His plans and intentions and to accept them for our guide through the future years until his return. It says that his word is the light unto our feet, and it actually shines upon our way. Therefore, let us make it a light unto our final destination. And may God bless us all. Until our next fellowship. Surely the Lord will do nothing 
but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets.